Don't freak out. Be considerate and realistic. Joey, I, I, I'm going to try not to freak out, but you're showing me your grandma from 1945 who's in your backyard. Granny better not be in that box, Joey. I'm going to be so mad with you if you got your grandma in that box. No! Oh! 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 Stop! What is up, guys? Welcome back to Strange YouTube channels number three. If you haven't seen the other two, make sure to go check them out. It's a series where we're just going to deep dive some weird YouTube channels. We look for things that people haven't covered or things that don't have much coverage, and we just sit down and deep dive it and go through it all. And it usually gets really weird. Proceed with caution. This video contains flashing lights and imagery. Also, if you are sensitive to topics around death, do not to proceed please do not harass any of the people named in these videos we are simply taking a little gander okay so without further ado i bring you the first channel This channel has a decent amount of videos, a good 20, 30 of them. They're all pretty short. The description reads, a nice Canadian woman with a soothing voice. There's no other links. And this channel is weird because it, it has a weird amount of views. And I don't know why. All these videos are really, really old. Like thir 13 years. Let's start with the first video, which is Rauk, 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 Noel. Every year around Christmas, two or three snow globes seem to surface from the brown cardboard boxes in the basement and perch themselves around the house like little glass birds. This one is my favorite. It's not particularly old or special. I just like the I just like that it has a little wind-up box built in. I always found the mechanism fascinating. When I was younger, I had winded up over and over again, putting it to my ear and listening to all the gears turning inside of it. Uh, that's how I noticed a small peculiarity in its function. After the music box spends its last note, I could sometimes hear a little whine come from within it, distinct a from the whine. turning of the cogwheels. I tried to record it here in this video. <laughs> did you hear it? <laughs> yes. Did that just, did that... Snow globe just Google Gaga at us? Yes, I'm sure that was 100% real coming from the snow globe. Dude, also, what's the deal with snow globes? If I feel like if you collect snow globes, you're kind of weird. It's uh. a weird thing to collect. But my brain automatically associates them with being evil. Okay, first video, banger. Uh, start off with a Google Gaga head ass fucking saint the snow globe. Straight into the second one, Psalms 77.6. That's it? I mean, I think I heard like little singing in the background, but other than that, I mean, this is someone, Psalm 77, six was just her walking around and then turning the light on. I'm, I feel like we're gonna get a nice little like weird ARG vibe from this. This is good. Corrupted bootleg. Remember, these are old too. This was 14 years ago. So she's got a bootleg DVD that she's putting in the DVD tray. Okay, it was obviously a very corrupted CD. A gift from one thrifty family member leaves me feeling a little uneasy. 
So this was a gift from a family member, apparently. That would, I would shit myself. I used to get really scared by stuff like that as a kid. If I went to put in like a very, sh what's that, sh what's that Shrek Christmas movie? Shrek the Halls. If I went to put in Shrek the Halls and fucking that happened, I would still to this day probably have a mental breakdown. The Round Hay Garden incident. All right, what do we got? This is the Round Hay Garden scene. The earliest surviving motion picture shot in 1888 in the Leeds Garden of Joseph and Sarah Whitley. The scene is only two seconds long, but it seems to have conveyed a queer curse. Sarah died only ten days after the shoot. Ooh. Director Louis Le Prince vanished from a French train two years later. And actor Alphonse Le Prince was found dead of a gunshot in 1902. Are you really surprised, though? That was fun. That was a fun little, like, uh, little, little mini uh, informative clip there. But let's be real. Put yourself back in the 1880s. The first people to film a motion picture, I'm not surprised people just started shooting them. It's like witchcraft. You just, it's like, look at this. And it's a fucking moving picture. Some cow, I'm sure some cowboy brain head ass guy saw you showing him a moving picture and fucking shot you. Of course he did. But thank you, Little Fierce, for the for the little informative uh, session right there. Let's keep keep cruising. Also, make sure to use the code the boys at GamerSubs, baby. La new. In France, a young ambient musician by the name of Charles Laurent undertook an interesting new project. He was going to record the sound of himself sleeping and released under the name La Nuit, the La Night Nuit. in English. Charles lived alone in a rural area, which would remove elements like car alarms or traffic from the recording. He planned his project for many months acquiring the sensitive equipment to capture all of the outside noises, as well as his own during sleep. Finally, on the 27th of September, he decided to execute his plan. He set up all of his equipment and fell asleep at midnight. The next day, Charles reviewed the recording. For the first hour, the recording played his own tossings and turnings, as well as some distant dog barks and a few car alarms. These continued throughout the second hour as well, until Charles heard something that horrified him. Exactly three hours and 24 minutes in, the recording played the sound of his bedroom door opening. Why the lip smacking noises? Was that necessary at all? This is actually, you know, okay, so you know those apps that monitor your sleep and like record any like uh audio anomalies anything happens they record and clip the audio i've thought about using those like multiple times throughout my life and i've chose not to out of fear of something fucking weird like this i've just been like no i'm not i'm not i really want to to hear what fucked up what fucked up deep sea noises i make what kind of like sasquatch noises i make when i'm sleeping but i also don't want to hear my fucking door open ignorance is bliss if someone's coming in and twerking and clapping it right above my face when i'm sleeping i'd rather not know okay we have an update video about that corrupted dvd a family member gave her this is a follow-up for corrupted bootleg so please watch that first if you haven't already spiritual 101 writes well, that was pretty strange. I've never seen the film, so I have no idea what the woman is saying at 030 seconds to 050 seconds. God, look at that old YouTube comment setup right there. Is it possible for you to record and upload the corrupted footage to your computer and onto YouTube? A full screen of this would look pretty cool. Well, thank you for writing, and I'd love to oblige. The DVD ripping software already in my possession, I was able to get started on this right away. While the rip was more successful than I guessed it would be, the video still doesn't show up at all on this computer. Luckily, the audio is salvageable. I'll play the first 40 seconds for you now. Interesting. Well, I wonder what those other video clips were there. Very insightful. I may as well note that I haven't seen this movie either. So I'm also clueless as to what the voice in the clip is saying. 
From that point onwards, the deep, crunching static growls monotonously on throughout the rest of what I was able to extract. As you can see and hear, damn, hold up the spectrogram. The fuck? That is, with the exception of one 10 second period of whistling about two and a half minutes in. Here is the isolated clip in waveform view. It, it just sound like 10 aliens fucking to me, dog. I don't, I don't think there's anything to take from this. However, I first observed this file in spectral view, which allows the whistling much more visibility. Let me show you how that looks now. 30. Thirsty! Oh yeah, well, now we're getting somewhere. Let's go. Oh, we're getting... Okay, these things are happening, fellas. Oh, we got some things happening. It says thirsty. I like this. I actually really like this. I feel like this is going to be a fun one. Like, this is going to actually have a bit of a storyline. Let's move on to the next one, Sea Sun 3. Would you like to watch a clip from Meet Love by Jan Schwenkmeier? Meet Love. Great. Okay. If you didn't know, Jan Schwenkmeier is a renowned Czech surrealist artist who has produced many motion pictures, including Alice and That's Monotic, walking, in which Meat Love appears as a mock commercial. The short film features two animate slices of steak interacting, dancing, and then rolling together in flour in a way suggestive of sexual intercourse. Ooh! Oh, 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 oh. What was that? That steak just slapped the other one on the ass. Did you hear the noise he made? Oh. We're going back re and rewatching that. In a way suggestive of sexual intercourse. That was epic. That little steak getting smacked on the ass. That was the craziest thing that I've ever seen on here. I'm never going to forget that. I've never had a thought of two animate steaks fucking, but it's going to be a thought that I'm going to have going into the future. Damn. Just back when they had, uh, they had comments on channels and she had a lot of comments and a lot of views for the time. Getting 5,000 views on a video in 2010. Why was she getting so many views? Who is she? Oh, you can have friends too. I used to DM people on YouTube. Isn't that fucking weird? Comments are late though. I'm going to light you on fire. Please start posting again. At least try to be original. Damn bitch. Holy shit she was number 40 most subscribed all-time reporters in canada we have the hitchhikers there are stories about a certain kind of hitchhiker they only ever appear at night on quiet roads seeming to flicker into existence at the edge of headlights never carrying a sign always with an expression of deep despondency on their faces swathed in a heavy coat and long pants usually with gloves if you stop, they seem cordial enough, polite, but hardly chatty. They'll assure you that the next town or city along your route will be a fine spot to leave them. Normal enough, unless you try killing them. They die easily enough, but look underneath their clothes and you will see that their skin is marred with the lines of scars, forming repeating patterns that are unsettling to look at, and even more unsettling in the context of their skin. They have no wallets or identification. If you slice their belly open, however, they're different inside. The frick? If you slice their belly There's open, no they're blood, different inside. No muscle, only a hollow cavity containing a single object. The object varies. Examples include a single coin, heavy and golden, engraved with the runes nobody could ever decipher. A diamond gem with fractal edges that slice bare flesh to ribbons. A small vase, quite unbreakable, that smells of the ocean and is always damp. Once you possess a hitchhiker's object, you'll find yourself always driving the quiet roads at night. You'll never mean to, but somehow you will. The lure of possessing a second one will hum quietly in your head. You'll strain to catch at the sight of a figure appearing in your headlights. Try to resist the impulse to stop, and sometimes you might. But sometimes you won't. You'll try telling yourself that this is just a normal person out on an adventure. Someone who just ran out of gas. The logical part of your brain will scream at what you're doing. But you'll smile 
and nod and we'll get into the car and you'll slowly, casually reach under the seat or across to the glove box. So what you're trying to say, lady, that we all want to subconsciously kill hitchhikers because they're carrying trinkets in their stomach. Yeah, that checks out. I feel that. Fridge. Epic title. That's On a fridge. On the underside of your refrigerator, there's a switch. Reach under there and feel it. Don't mind the dust or the roaches. You'll know it when you feel it. It's a hard metal tab sticking out of the slot in the plastic underside. It will be set on the right hand side. If you switch to the left, nothing will happen. Your appliances will continue to run. The floor won't open into a swirling vortex that leads directly into the deepest circle of hell. You won't even hear a hitch in the hum of the refrigerator. You'll get up and brush off and go about your business. You may even move out and leave your old refrigerator behind. Switch still set to the left like it doesn't matter. Does it? However, two days after your death, if someone were to look, they would find an odd number of fingers, toes, and eyes in the stomach of your corpse. Did she say after your death they'll find an odd number of fingers, stomach, and eyes inside your corpse? What? It read a two-sentence horror moment. The boy showed up at the school. The sign read, Happy Human School. A gust of wind blew down the sign, revealing the real sign beneath. Evil Monster School. My aunt used to tell me this weird little urban legend at family gatherings when I was little. After everyone was too drunk or too busy socializing amongst themselves to notice her terrifying me. She's dead now. I didn't have the opportunity to check if she was right. I don't know what the blue light is in the at 53 in the footage. Oh, it's okay. We forgive you. Sound asleep. 14 years ago. The average person spends one third of their life sleeping. That's a total of that roughly one hundred and ninety-four thousand. I hate that fact. Why? That's not a fun fact. Eight hundred and twenty hours. Fact. While it varies from person to person, a sound louder than forty decibels is usually enough to keep someone awake. However, once the subject is sleeping, it usually requires a disturbance louder than sixty decibels to wake them. This is roughly as loud as a dishwasher or dryer if you were seated next to it. Luckily, most things aren't that loud. That's good. Right. It's like Spooky Fun Facts Channel, man. This is sick. I fucking hate that statistic, and I would rather forget it. So far, though, it's really interesting. I actually really like it. If you're wondering why I'm all shiny, it's really hot in this room. There's no AC. We're in Australia and there's your swamp where my nuts used to be. Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant is one of those little suburban communities that seem to have spilled out across the rural Ontario countryside in recent years. Like many of its breed, it contains an endless procession of tidy, reasonably sized houses neatly lined up by the sides of streets with names like Sunnyview Road. Grovewood Drive and Orange Tree Gate. Even the name of the community itself is unspectacular. As a matter of fact, there are eight different Mount Pleasants in Ontario alone. However, on the morning of March 12, 2008, some of its residents awoke to a bewildering surprise. Alongside a small, sleepy road called Emmett Circle, there appeared to be one more street light than had illuminated the road the night before. The mysterious lamppost stood as tall and as weather-worn as its neighbors. Huh. Even the snow around it seemed undisturbed, although curious locals who drew near enough reported hearing a faint, directionless humming when in close proximity to it. Inquiring calls were placed to the local Spooky municipality ghost offices. Lamp. But all were responded to in befuddled tones. It appeared no one had ordered the unusual nighttime installment. The world continued to turn, though, and the sun set on March 12th, leaving those who witnessed the oddity with no more information than they had had at the beginning of the day. March 13th only brought more mystery, nonetheless. 
where the perplexing lamppost had stood the evening before lay only undisturbed virgin snow. Media and the government workers who had been called down to inspect this the real? peculiarity found nothing, and any investigation was ceased. Written off for the most part as a community gag. It's a classic prank. The double light post prank. It, everyone knows that one. Another strange occurrence gradually surfaced. Pleading signs and posters began to coat any accommodating surface in the streets. Nearly 15 outdoor cats and dogs kept as pets in a surrounding radius of about two kilometers were reported missing in the following week. Many of them were last seen sometime between the 11th and the 13th. Alien lamp post eats neighbor's dog? <laughs> Lamp post jump scare? Canada's fucking weird, man. That's a cool premise for a creepypasta. I don't know why it's cool. It's a lamp, but it's cool. I done goofed, fellas. I had it sorted by most popular, and we were going from least popular up. Should we just continue in that order? That explains the se uh, season three thing. We're just going to start from the bottom up, and then once we get here, it's like nothing ever happened, and I didn't fuck up, and I'm not a big, big old bozo. A trick of the light. Technically the first video on the channel. When I was little, I was very prone to car sickness. As a result, my family would often leave me in the house for days during the vacation season. I appreciated the time to myself and would spend it writing, drawing, or watching television with the volume up far too loud. However, once night fell and my eyelids drew heavy, anxiety would flood through me. I'd become jumpy, catching reflections in the movement of every window and mirror. Once, this drove me to do something I've since regretted. I simply left the light in the hall on, allowing it to shine into my bedroom from the thin crack below the door. I have tweaked so hard over this exact thing. Seeing the little light under the door and then like shit on the other side blocking the light. Yeah, nah. So it seems like a lot of this is interesting creepypastas, but what I'm really curious about, so I think it takes a turn, but we're gonna keep going with the second video worn out. A few years ago, I used to pick a few old worn out records from the bins at my thrift store every time I passed by. It was a little thing I did to keep myself amused. Playful polka anthologies, horror sound effects records, a spoken class in aerobatics, hypnosis records to help you quit smoking. Is it that fucking nuts? That used to be a remedy for stopping smoking. And that's real. That's real as fuck. People would undergo hypnosis to quit smoking cigarettes. My engineering teacher in high school, I think it was his brother, he told the story, went un under, went hypnosis. I don't know if it was like cartoon, like Courage the Cowardly Dog, like fucking watch in your face hypnosis. If it was Shaoli, level hypnosis. It fucking worked, man. It's crazy. Amongst my ever-growing pile of useless old records was one warped old album held in a plain brown sleeve. It's label worn and illegible. It being one of the better albums that had turned up in my collection, I would listen to it often. After a few weeks of having that singular record on heavy rotation, I was infatuated by a funny little thought. With each play of the album, the singer seemed to sound just a little more exhausted. It became an exercise. I listened for new signs of fatigue with every repetition. With each periodical reoccurrence of that album on my turntable, I was almost certain the soloist grew more exasperated, and the instrumentation grew more stumbling and jagged. Over the passage of time, I grew more and more weary of playing the record, especially when I was alone in the house. A few years ago, I traded in my old record player at the thrift store and got an mp3 player. Why was that a mic drop? How did you even make that a mic drop? I traded in my old record player for an mp3 player! <laughs> Ooh, urban exploration. Okay, this is after sound sleep. Last winter, a friend and I decided to do a little urban exploration. The small town we live in shares its borders with a lot of old farmland, so we really had our pick of the litter as far as locations go. 
We finally settled on an old two-story farmhouse, only a short walk to the southeast of where I live. Here's a little footage. Um, sorry about the audio quality. Okay. So this is first-hand footage, apparently. Sorry about the audio quality. It sounds like, realistically, you shoved the camera mic up someone's ass. We'll, we'll take it. I really want to see what Captions thinks this is saying. Captions is dumbfounded. Befuddled, even. Can't even come up with a sentence. Okay, we got like a creepy old brick building. Looks like people have already f***ed up and broken into. Oh yeah, so while we were in the basement of the farmhouse, I nearly tripped on something in the dark. Turns out it was a virtually new digital camera. I picked it up, turned it on, snapped a picture just to see if it still worked. Surprisingly, it's in perfect shape. Oh sweet, that's a big dub. I didn't notice that video on it until I got back home. By the way, these are the recordings that were on it when I found it. The f*** happened to that door? So this footage is all from the camera that she found. Must be the initial uh, house explorers. Interesting. Something bad's gotta happen. That makes him drop the camera. Oh, and if you're curious, here's the picture I snapped in the basement. Anything funky, fellas? Do you see anything funky? Other than the basement looks fucking terrifying. As much as I'd love to see Molly locked in there for 30 minutes doing the Estes method, I don't know if I could even stomach put him in this one. Now we have a video called Curiosity. If you remember, you could actually see this video in on our computer in one of the other videos. I've always been a bit of a curious person. Over the last few weeks, I've noticed that some of my clothing stored in my dresser has been a little disarranged, to say the least. I'm fairly organized, so the mystery of how my things ended up in a less than pristine state had been gnawing at the back of my mind. Now mind you, the changes have all been quite innocent in nature. I like to organize things by size, and a few articles of clothing would end up crumpled or in the wrong order. It reared itself as a topic of conversation a few times, each ending with the same conclusion. I should videotape my dresser while I was out of the house. Having assumed my sister to be the culprit, the goal was to catch her in the act. I placed the video Did you catch her? In box oh man, let's so see. To conceal let's see. my motives and went about my day, allowing the camera to film until it ran out of tape. Now, you're going to have to trust me on this, but you don't want to see what comes next. Are you debating me right now? Are you not? You gotta show what comes next. Ah! I think this is a big fear that we can all come together on. Like, when I find something out of place, specifically in my spaces that nobody goes into, it spins me out. Full paranoid schizophrenic for the rest of the day. Like, I fixate on stuff like that so much when it happens. I'm gonna skip the ones that are just creepypastas because they're fun to listen to, but, you know, we get the gist. What's this one? I hate Coke. This is the beginning of her I hate shit series, which is... I woke up early to work on the next installment for this project today. I responded to mail, scoured my brain for ideas, carefully arranged sentences, checked facts, even looked up how to pronounce the names of small German towns so as to be as accurate and succinct in my presentation to you, the viewer, as I could be. As I began to record, I found myself growing a little thirsty. I trundled into the cold cellar to fetch myself a soda. Sweet treat, even? A delectable Coca-Cola? Returning with Coke in hand, I retrieved a glass and some ice and placed them on the desk beside me. Pouring the dark, 
syrupy soda into the glass. I realized something was hanging out of the can. Shaking it caused a few wiry legs to fall from the oh. can and into the drink. Then oh, no, the entire dude. body of what I assumed to be a house centipede. Luckily, I oh. still would have noticed even if it hadn't fallen in without a fight. Because it landed ever so neatly on the ice cubes. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it, transitions were epic. Was that what was that at the end? It's a Coca-Cola classic. Ever since that old story of the rat and the mountain dew, I'm incapable of moving on. It'd be someone who's eaten a lot of bugs, I would be really upset by that still. Okay, we have in the deep sea everything is death with the description sex talk. Okay. At Interesting. birth, male ceratoids are already equipped with extremely well-developed olfactory organs that detect scents in the water. The male ceratoid lives solely to find and mate with the female. There's so many animals that their sole purpose is to get pussy and then die. They are significantly smaller than the female anglerfish and have trouble finding food in the deep sea. This necessitates his quickly finding a female anglerfish to prevent his death. The sensitive olfactory organs help the male to detect the pheromones that signal the proximity of a female anglerfish. When he finds a female, he bites into her skin and releases an enzyme that digests the skin of his mouth and her body, fusing the pair down to the blood vessel level. The male then slowly atrophies, first losing its digestive organs, then its brain, heart, and eyes, and ends as nothing more than a pair of gonads, which release sperm in response to hormones in the female's bloodstream, indicating egg release. This extreme sexual dimorphism ensures that, when the female is ready to spawn, she has a mate immediately available. I just thought you should know. So dude's whole life purpose is to get pussy, find a female, bite her in the face, get pussy and die. Cool. We're only going to watch a few more because most of these are, are creepypastas. So this one is their most popular video. I hate stuff. Hey, are you ready to go for a walk? Are you ready to go for a walk? Honey? She's taking her puppy for a walk. Music's amazing. Shadow. Oh shit. She took her puppy for a walk and there's bare human footsteps leading back through her front door. Fuck. That I would I would lose my shit. I I would clear out that whole house like a fucking SWAT team after that. So what is Little Fears? I feel like Little Fears is a really interesting channel. Solid creepypasta channel. It's exactly what the title says, Little Fears. And it's a nice, it's a Canadian maiden with a soothing voice here to tell you spookies that shiver your timbers. With a light sprinkle of stuff that isn't creepypastas. Or kind of right on time, like 2010, couple, like a year or two early on the creepypasta shit. So that is Little Fears. It doesn't seem like there's much more to it than that. I like it. That's a solid channel. They they don't upload no more. They have uploaded in like 13 years and they're probably never going to again. But thank you, Little Fears. Gracias, Senor Rita. Now the next channel. Oh boy, I am so fucking excited for this one because this channel was like a suppressed memory. When I was going through a compiled list of channels and I saw this, I was like, where the fuck do I know that from? And then I clicked on the channel and you'll notice on this computer, I'm signed into Venombite, my first YouTube channel ever, I, where I posted over 400 videos since 2008. And I noticed what the fuck this video has been watched. It's because I remember me and my friends found Meat Sleep back when I was like 17 or 18 and we we were watching it. Meat Sleep is a channel with 20,000 subs, 19 videos. If you check out their about, they don't have anything else listed there. It's just their channel. So if we use the Wayback Machine, best fucking thing ever, go back to 2015. You can see under the channel Meat, there is a lot of videos that are not here. Okay, I think I've 
bit off a bit more than I could could chew here. Um, there is a meat sleep archiving channel that has archived all their shit that has a lot on it. So I think the way we're going to go about this is go through the channel with what's on there and what they've intended for us to see and then go check out all the little stuff. So we're going to start off with the first video, Fornin? Fornin? <laughs> What did that say? Oh, Jesus Christ. That was fucking insane. Okay. S E W Sewn Sewn K I Sewn Kin. Whatever the fuck that means. Holy shit. There is the so that's the first meat sleep post. We have like a creepy room. That is a fucking bull's head on the toilet and the bulls okay look so the door closes this is insane it's the top of a mannequin the door closes oh yeah it's a bull's head then the door closes into the top of a mannequin boom boom it's the beginning okay sweet we're on to the fourth video which is titled <laughs> Holy I shit, this is a big I jump from the last stuff. I beat you. You live here. I give you a home. I give you a place to sleep. I give you a secret place. Just for you. A place to clean your disgusting body. You live here. I cleaned you. I love you be like a person. You live here. You are ungrateful. You live here. What the fuck was that? Right there. What the fuck? You live here. I gave you a home. You're ungrateful. I gave you a place to clean your filthy body. Okay, so obviously the narrator has kidnapped somebody and he's very upset that they're that they're not happy with it they're not happy with the, the living conditions the crib don't got a tv so we're gonna go to the next one which is just symbols it almost looks like a tp i don't know i don't know now we're out of the basement looking through the keyhole someone's wiggling the door We've gone from just the basement to now we are playing the role of the captor and we now know it's a woman. Looks like we got a couple free tefers with it too. Next is the video circle. Skin. New skin. Someone standing over there in the parking garage. This has to be. Shut the fuck up, Opera GX. This has to be the footage of the person that we saw in the last clip being kidnapped out of that parking garage. I, I wish I knew what this word in the beginning said, though. And then we have our next victim. Boom. Here for the fan meetup. We have S-N-W-E colon U-B-Y-W, which is a quick one. It's only 18 seconds. He 
these videos are stressful, man. <laughs> this lady, silly channel. All right, then again, nothing from that one. Let's keep going. We got this one, which is just a bunch of random symbols. Oh, what is that? Is that a bottle? Five. What does the five mean? So this, by the way, I'm not sure. I don't think it is actually the real Meat Sleep channel. I'm pretty sure the real one was deleted or they deleted it. Because we can see that there's people covering Meat Sleep, notably Scare Theater, shout out Scare Theater. And there's a Meat Sleep archives page, which we will be looking at. And these are all posted before all of these. So I think the whole, this is a re-upload thing stands, but we're going to keep going and then we'll look at the archives. But the next upload on the channel is Forever Home. Oh, wait. What the f***? Dude, it's just, it's so f***. Let's go straight into the next one. It's just another short one. Keeper. In. This. In this side? A pile of butter chicken or something? I beats me. Who knows? But the next video I'm excited for, the next one is two and a half minutes long. It's called Livestock. Skin farm. That's fucked. The forbidden sausage. The forbidden sausage is ah, oh, it's wiggling. This is so unsettling. You're giving me brain rot. I can feel it. Holy. F Oh, it's hard to look at. And I'm not even a epile epile what's the word? E epileptic! Not even epileptic. I almost just said I'm not even epic. I'm not even epic, but this is kinda hard to look at. Am I right, fellas? Name drop, meat sleep. Alright, other than serving to rattle the dust off of my brain, uh that didn't really seem to serve much purpose other than being fucked. When it said, Oh, it made me cry so inspirational. Mama, Mushesh, Sniat, it sniat eh, at problem, at provit to. Stote Prigata Villa. So true. Next, we're moving on to uh, this. Whatever the f this is. It looks like a pile of mac and cheese. Forbidden mac and cheese. Or unhappy. Why are you unhappy? What causes unhappiness? You want things to be different. You want things. Why do you want things? Stop wanting things to stop. Stop. Stop and stop wishing. Stop struggling and stop. Summary of forecast issued on Friday evening, 8th of January 1993, by Environment Canada for the Western Territories in Northwestern BC for tonight and Saturday. Stop wanting to operate quiet, quiet. 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 These videos make me want to throw up, but he do be spitting straight facts, though. It's hap I'm happy to hear his voice again, whoever he is. He's just saying, why are you unhappy? Why do you want things? Gives us a bit more context than a fucking flashing image of a sausage for two and a half minutes. Oh, we're coming down the home stretch! S seven more videos. We went out and saw her. It was actually Christmas Eve. We went and saw her. And she was just skin and bone. It took us, what, six, 
six almost months six months to get her out of where we can get a truck back there to get her. The doll, free oil. Something, oh shit, the basement door is opening. We're getting yoinked. No! We're getting yoinked. No! S okay, I, I got it. I got it. These adverts that we're seeing are like porno ads, like old porno ads, like girls in trouble, wild orgy photos. Boom! It's like it's a it's a it's a porn mag or it's calling paper for escorts, which maybe this is how meat is getting some of their victims. Oh, fuck. I didn't even notice that the dog is back for a second, literally one second. He's definitely kidnapping escorts, question mark. He got one from a parking garage. And I think in the beginning he's talking about maybe putting him there. I don't know. The next video is a long one and then followed by just a bunch of short ones and it's over. The, the fun's over. Sorry, guys. All right, buckle in, buckos. This is almost a seven-minute video. Are you creep shotting a guy from across the street? He's got a few puppies. Is that a body with a blanket over it? Police tape? The f it is. You can see the feet. We have police officers showing up on the scene. Yep, he's dead as fuck. He's cozy though. Let's take a look around. What if they all just had to work off right now? Ooh, there was a the big black dog for just a second to the bottom right. I don't know if you guys saw that. Something tells me it wasn't coincidental. There it is again. That's, there it is. Is that one of the dude's dogs? Wait, this guy's outside the crime scene. He's not one of the police. This has to be the main guy in our story. Big black dog, random dude skulking around. Whoa, getting funky. Whoa, whoa. Oh, there's a word in there. F*** me in the ass. Oh, it's just saying not enough space. 
You think this is how like uh, eight year olds on an iPad feel when they watch a Mr. Beast video? Does it feel like they're putting their fucking brain on a wireless charger? This is what I imagine it feels like to chew on a radioactive isotope. Big ball of uranium. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else of substance in this. It's just, uh... Okay, I am thoroughly convinced that the person off to the right and the black dog are the people, me and his dog. The big black dog we've seen in the basement twice. And the actual guy behind all this shit. I'm gonna tell you why. Here we have weird video of guy in a normal car with a dog. Okay, and then it cuts to this woman going to her car. Like, just looks like she was jogging or something. And she's looking over at him like he's... A big, tall, green fucking alien. She's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Cuts to the police showing up at the crime scene. None of them are wearing what the other guy was wearing. If you look in this shot, you can see the dog doing a little jog right there. And then in this shot, we have some random guy, again, with a dog. Off to the side. I don't know. I think I think that's true. I think I think I'm on it. I think I'm on the fucking ball. I I think I'm I'm so on the ball. It's fucking gay, dude. I next video Martober, which was the title of the second video on this channel. No, dude, not the. No, dude. <laughs> ah! The f There's something censored in the corner. What the f***, man? My, why was my first thought the for, the forbidden ass pounder, dude? It's a choppy choppy time. Float some jet some ligand derelict. I feel like I've heard there's wo those words before. Let me look at the... In maritime law, float some jet some... That are specific kinds of shipwrecks. Okay. So these are terms for different types of shipwrecks. Got it. There's body in the barrel. I think that's what that's supposed to mean. There's a body in the barrel. There's boy in the boy in the blue barrel. What is this supposed to mean though? Uh, obviously, they have clapped whoever was in the basement and blue barreled them. Martober, they chopped them up into fine bite-sized pieces into giblets, and now they've stuffed them in a barrel. Hold the L. This is not a coda. Okay, there's a woman off in the distance that we're watching. So we're stalking a woman at the moment. What the fuck is happening? What am I looking at? Oh, she's putting stuff in the freezer. Oh, bro. My brain went like 10 different places with that. That was one of those name one thing in this image moments right there, bro. Okay. I'm in your microwave. Are we in the microwave? Are we getting chicken nugget POV right now? Okay, so we- Oh, fuck. So this is meat sleep stalking their next victim. It has to be. A coda is an ending part of a piece of music or a work of literature or drama that is separate from the earlier parts. Birthright. Maybe these can give us some more context.
Not her ah! All right, let's watch the last video, Wolf. It's only 42 seconds long. That's it. Oh, fuck, that's it. So my theory on Meat Sleep from this, we still have an archive to go through, but my theory just off of these re-uploads, and this seems to be kind of this core hard-lined version of the story, is that it's about a serial killer who abducts women, call girls, stuff like that. He's got a cool black dog. But I also think that Meat Sleep is something other than that. I think it's more of an art piece with a loose story in it. I don't know if this was ever made, to be something with a story or if that was just more of a part of the expression the art coming first and then the story coming kind of second to it because that's what it feels like which isn't bad but i'm gonna skim through these meat sleep archives and see if i can get anything more from them uh because holy f there's a lot of videos guys oh first one i watch is just people banging <sighs> This video was eight minutes of silence, broken by that? That was actually interesting. Devil in the House kind of supports the fact that meat in this storyline is a serial killer. There's piles of women's purses and women's shoes. Disgruntled piles. There's an intercom. You can see they're stalking this woman running through the forest. I love such comments, man. It's a very secluded area. It would be easy to attack possible victims, Ayo. All right, that little fucker's getting it. Feels like clues to where like the bodies dropped, you know? This this one's probably one of the more pretty put together videos that Meets uploaded at all. I feel like the other videos were kind of the mainline core of Meat Sleep. And these are videos that were intentionally removed, whether it was unlisted or this or that. But one thing that we do need to look at is this video no more. This was uploaded on the original Meat channel by the creator. Apparently it was found out that she was a woman and you know, you're a woman on the internet. <laughs> Everyone freaked out. She got a lot of threats. <laughs> like, yeah, so she uploaded this. All right, I'm going to read all this for you guys. Enough. Shonkin, two countries, three participants. Meat sleep, four continents, eight countries, 11 participants. With regular Skype meeting, a simple system for decisions. A dice. Who delivers raw video? Whom rolls three? Ties and non rolls settled same fashion. Who will create audio? Whom rolls four? Ties and non rolls settled same fashion. Who completes videos with editing? Whom rolls five? 
Ties and non-rolls settled same fashion. Sometimes a roll happens, several sources must be used. Restrictions of filming subjects, audio, editing, all constrained by similar algorithms with a dice. Story of Meat Sleep and Sewn Skin was created by viewer speculations. You have been the directors. A simple system for a decision of story. A rumor read in your discussion. We present the rumor to the group. Rumor claims X. Roll a dice. Even roll means express anger against rumor. Odd roll means encourage that rumor. Decisions and actions can be changed many times based on dice. Pick X. Ban X. Roll. Allow back X. Roll. Pick any person from the internet. Even means no. Odds means yes. So what Mama Meat is saying here is that there's 11 people across four continents who are responsible for meat sleep alone, and they make every decision with the roll of a dice, which is f***ing cool. That's really cool. None of the story was planned. It was simply made by the viewers, which I feel like is a case with a lot of stuff like this. If I'm not wrong, that was the case with Dad, right? Nathan Barnett's ARG. That was just a thing, and then he just kind of went with the directions of the theories and flushed it out. Meat sleep is a gender. Odd roll, yes. Even roll, no. Male, even number. Female, odd number. Meat sleep is a cannibal. Odd, yes, even no. Cannibal, <laughs> kidnapper, oddball, etc., etc., etc. Encourage, discourage based on our dice. But now there is a real life harassment, stalking, abuse, rudeness to people as resulting from this channel. Sad to say, a fun thing made to be fun and enjoyed. Sad to say you made it ugly. Please stop bothering people about these channels. For the victims of the harassment, we are sorry. You did not deserve these. We did not intend these. All of you, please stop. You ruined things. Enough. This is over. Stop. There it is. The reason that meat sleep ended. But a beautiful, beautiful art piece. It's so good. I remember watching this meat sleep analysis video scare theater eight years ago eight fucking years ago and i have not thought of meat sleep once since to be honest it slipped my mind completely I, I was like that's familiar but this wasn't out at that time a lot of these videos weren't out at the time of the meat sleep analysis there was five videos so yeah pretty fucking cool it's a shame that uh, bozos on the internet ruin most good things. Honestly, so fucking cool. I love the idea of the decision making being made fully with dice across tons of people and also having multiple people work on like one thing, but parts of it. Like as a big fan of the Chain series, we played on the channel forever ago, which was basically a game of telephone with developers. Make a random short game. And then you give it to the next person and it's up for them to decide where their story goes and interpret your art for what it is and how they perceive it and continue it. And that just keeps happening until you can't even recognize it by the end. They put that meat to, to sleep, yerd. Not many ARGs are out there that are probably on this level that nobody will ever f***ing find. It was a lot easier to find this type of stuff back in the day. Anyways, meat sleep, the f***ing cool ass story about some deranged killer told through a bunch of ARG styled YouTube videos. Bricked up. I'm bricked up. You're probably thinking, oh, Juicy's been fucking uh, rambling now for like an hour. Like, why is this dude gonna shut the fuck up? Well, every episode wouldn't be complete without somebody who's a complete fucking whack job. And I might be bringing you the oddest ball that we have ever found. How does it top a woman who's been consuming her own piss for 15 years and documenting it? DJ Def Joey is back, but not 100% yet. Why? You're not interested yet? My dead great grandma's coffin in my own backyard. With the thumbnail being his dead great grandma. Interested yet? So am I. Let's look at it. DJ Def Joey, 13.5K subs and 200 videos. God, I wish we had enough time to watch all of them. Have you ever seen or met a deaf guy doing the DJ gigs? Let's try to contact DJ Def Joey. He's very profound deaf, not hard of hearing. He's deaf and working as a part-time professional mobile DJ entertainer since 1995. I've been doing DJ gigs for weddings, businesses, organizations, birthdays, senior citizen parties, retirement parties, bar mitzvahs, Latin parties, Halloween parties, Mardi Gras parties, etc., etc. Basically, DJ Def Joey is the fucking party animal, party god, party master. They took his ears away because he was too fucking OP. Pretty normal from the description, but uh, his most popular video with 5 million views fucking begs to differ. I'm going to try to upload this on YouTube, but I don't want them to 
strike me and I don't want to piss them off. So if this is all blurred for you, I'm sorry. Just know that I tried to upload a version with this all included. Know that if you're watching one of my videos and something's blurred that you don't think should be or that you wish it wasn't, know for a fact that I uploaded it at some point. This is not uh, DJ Def Joey's first video, but it's his most popular and we are starting off with the fireworks. For Def Guys, intro music's fucking banging. Hello, everybody. I wanted to show you my story about what's up around here. So I will be reading all of DJ Jeff Joey's subtitles. Guys, because uh, he can't speak. All right, ominous blue tarp. There's no way DJ Def Joey has a dead grandma on there. He's been baking in the sun. That's a real casket of my great grandma who passed away in 1945. I never meet her in person before since I was born eight years later. So that means the old cemetery cannot upkeep because of the corruption. So I decided to have it move. Fuck, Joey, your fucking ASL is faster than my reading comprehension, man. So I decided to have it move to my own backyard ever since. So as grandma died, they couldn't afford a casket, a grave site in the cemetery. And they just said, ah, fuck it. Granny's a lawn ornament now. I will show my old video two years ago, and you will see the reason why. Whoever see before, please keep it quiet, okay? Bye, and enjoy the next video. Think. Positive, and be considerate. Okay. What's in the, what's in that, what's in that, what's in that fucking tarp, Joey? What's in the tarp? My great grandma's coffin in my own backyard. Surely there's not a great grandma in that, in that, in that coffin. Old video was made in October, 2008. I wanted to fucking hell, Joey. Slow it down. Recently, I told you about the real human skull in my previous video. Here it is. Cool, cool skull. Okay, now I wanted to show you what my grandma's casket. Okay, casket right here with my video camera set on it. That's where my grandma's casket is here. She died on October 31st, 1945. My great grandma being long dead. And then somehow her proper burial place, but about 20 years ago, her cemetery area corrupted and closed due to poor maintenance. Could you fucking imagine? I actually feel bad for him because I get what he's saying. Your grandmother in her coffin, maybe she's in what is it? Uh, that's the little, the thing where they shelve them all. They fucking put them up on a, on a shelf. Put that granny up on a shelf. You know what I'm saying? Like the cemetery closed down and was like, uh, guys, if you want these bodies back, the lot actually got bought by a Wawa and they're going to start development in two months. So please come pick up your loved ones. So we had to go scoop granny. Something like that. So I had to have her coffin to be placed in my backyard ever since. His English, at least his spelling in this, isn't the best. I'm doing my best. I've been taking care of her casket, watching and checking to make sure everything is okay. So I wanted to see what she looked like today. Don't freak out. Be considerate and realistic. Okay, now I'm ready to show you. Joey, I, I, I'm going to try not to freak out, but you're showing me your dead grandma from 1945 who's in your backyard. Hey, granny, granny better not be in that box, Joey. I'm going to be so mad with you if you got your grandma in that box. Be very upset. Come on. Crack it open. Oh, it's just grandma. It's actually his fucking grandma. Oh, my God. Damn, she's actually looking... You're looking good, Granny. She looks like she ate a Popeye's biscuit with no water, though. But uh, other than that, she's uh, not looking too bad for, like, 60 years old. Wow. Yeah, that's the police showing up. A woman's casket was taken from a local cemetery today. Fourth time this week. He's giving us Granny from every angle, too. No! Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. He just kissed his dead grandma like 20 times. This, this, this is a corpse. This granny died before Hitler. Oh, jaws open. Don't be. Don't be what, Joey? S no. <laughs> Not the credits with your grandma. Starring DJ Jeff Joey as self. Co-starring Catherine Lou Hall as my great-grandmother who's been dead in my backyard since 1945. I take everything back. It's all okay. I take it all back. Directed by DJ Def Joey. I like the part where you kissed your dried-up grandmother on the lips 20 times. I choose to believe that YouTube never age-restricted this video because they're afraid of what DJ Def Joey would do to him. I totally get why she's in his backyard, and it makes perfect sense, and... It's sad. The cemetery was corrupt and went out of business, and they literally said, yo, you got to take these things back. And to rehome that casket would be expensive as fuck. 
To move a grave, right, it is estimated to be $8,000 to $20,000. It's on average a $5,000 ordeal. And I'm, I know she's already dug up, so it probably it would be a couple grand. I get it. But why did you mac on her, Joey? Why did you mac on your dead old granny like that? That was a bit weird. They weren't weird kisses. I, you guys, it was kind of blurred, so you couldn't see it. They weren't like, Ugh. but that would be disrespectful. I don't mean to disrespect you, Joey. I'm being facetious. I know that you you didn't do that. But it was like, so what else is Joey about? We know he's a badass deaf DJ. Podhead alien. Oh, fuck. He doesn't have subtitles in this one. But that is a badass little alien right there, my guy. I'm loving it, Joey. I'm loving it. So for Joey, guys, we're just going to go through his most popular videos because he has a lot of them. Oh, no. Oh, man. It's another video. Of his grandma. No! <laughs> Afterwards, he's like, ugh, fucking wiping the dust off. This video is my haunting encounter at Linda Vista Community Hospital in Los Angeles, CA. New spot for a boy's video? Oh, fuck, man. I wish that he had subtitles. Oh, there are some subtitles. There are some subtitles. My interpreter came with me for a short while. So for those of you who don't know, though most of you have been watching me for a while do, obviously you know about the boys. This is like our main, my main project. We do a lot of haunted locations and man, there's something so special with haunted locations when you get a chance to see them during the day and then stay there until night. It's so cool to see the vibe change. And our videos are so, f it's all fucking real. We're shit scared. At nighttime, it's hard to take in just how dilapidated and somewhat aesthetic a lot of these places are. So it's really cool when you get to go to locations like this and then be there during the daytime and then stay there during the night as well. It's a really, really creepy experience. Holy f what happened in that sink, dude? Looks like my sink after a night in Ebor. Holy frank. Someone got hungry, took a bite out of the wall too. Someone tapped lightly on my left shoulder and I looked around behind and found no one there. So I hurried excited out of the room using the stairway. Ugh. Oh, we have his full account at the end. Thank frank. This was the incident where the two yellow doors slammed on me while I was taking a break there inside the hall and waited for the glimpse of the entity of apparition at the end of the hall. I saw some kind of activities under the door edge at the end and then about 15 minutes later the door slammed and it scared the hell out of me. I never forgot my encounter there with the cold wind swished through behind me at the same time the door shut on me. I jumped out of course and hoped the door didn't lock on me but it didn't and I finally opened the door wide to look at the other end. No one was there and no winds at all scratch my head we had an experience like that actually it was in a haunted location the one that um eddie left during which we will be revisiting by the way with some guests it'll be a while before it uploads but we got some uh some special guests we had an experience like that where there was a a, a room with this massive massive fucking door and i mean it's not like a double wide door this was like the size of a wall door it was meant to close a whole corridor off from another corridor super still muggy fucking air we did a quiet crisscross applesauce sit down and we just sat in silence and listened. we do that a lot during our, our investigations and this huge fucking door just flew shut we jumped up started looking around because i'm like oh someone locked us in here everyone's in the room even the guide. Anyways, back to Joey's experience. Scratch my head. <laughs> but I did go through and took more pictures of the haunted third floor where many people used to film this location there and encountered the eerie sounds and also some slamming doors and unexplained incidents. You all can watch the TV, the Travel Channel Ghost Adventurers, where the videographer jumped back from the lady apparition, appearing for a good few seconds in 2009. Most based out of pocket good show ever so joey likes paranormal stuff he seems to kind of like morbid stuff too and another video he reviews oh he's got his grandpa's skull okay joey fool me once shame on you fool me twice um urgh, i'm gonna eat your house first it's your grandma and we understand joey we understand but now you also have your great granddad's skull what other family members do you have the corpses of so here we have footage of joey running around and he finds like a, is it a secret room during renovations and you can see him crawling into the secret room. 
and there's a skull in the room. Like a human fucking skull in the dust in the corner of the room. Joey yoinks it, yoink. And first thing he does, boom, place it right on grandma's casket. The discovery was made in 2005 when I did the renovation project at my parents' 1910 bungalow house near Los Angeles, California. I'm bringing this up for a reason. I'll tell you in a moment. But in case you're wondering, most of the paranormal activity in my home began before I moved those things in from that house. Can a house be haunted by a skull of an occupant? My great-grandfather, who lived there almost 100 years ago? Various owners, including me, have found that it can. Over the years, several owners of the house have tried to bury the skull in the garden in the back of the house, but such bad luck has followed, and they have brought it back in once they touched it. It may freak you out at the sight of the broken skull. Watch it when you can. So your grandfather, where's the rest of them, though? Did great granny cut his f***ing head off and, like, throw him in there? What's, uh, what's going on, Joey? Where's the full story? At least he didn't kiss the skull. Do you think gay is unnatural? Is Bible accurate? You may be surprised. Epic Joey, rare Joey W, if we're being honest. Joey's still in the big point deficit with me for... Ugh. This is an adorable video. Introducing my punk grandson, Zach. Oh, he f***ing pranked us, Joey! Is that one of your relatives, too? Um, what's your- What? Holy f***, ASL monkey? Uh, his last upload was eight years ago. And he just seems like a kind of morbidly interested hippie grandpa. He's just the cool- He's the grandpa that we all wish we had. When we are angry, we are blind to reality. God, this guy does not have a mean bone in his f***ing body. But I tell you, he's got a couple hundred mean bones in his backyard. Swine flu conspiracy theory, part one. I would do f***ing anything to be able to f***ing understand this video. DJ Def Joey's still in mourning. We got a tearjerker, guys. Dear DJ Jeff Doey, don't f***. Once I was young... I stood so proudly at your side. Now I can't, and I grieve the loss of my ability. Get the f***ing tissues up, out, folks. Get them out, because we're f***ing riding through this entire video. We need it for the DJ Jeff Joey Lord. J Joey, f Keep watching. Wait, keep watching. It's real. That's his dead great-grandmother. All right, back to the video about the, the dog. I've got a tearjerker, folks. Once I ran across yards and fields and guarded our times together. Now I lay in pain, and I feel so sad as I cannot understand what happened to my body. Bruh. Oh, fuck. This is nine minutes long, guys. This is important for the fucking DJ Def Joey lore. Once I was so good, and I used the appropriate place for my bodily waste. Now I have accidents, and it breaks my heart to not be able to prevent my accidents. I am humiliated, and I do not understand why. Bruh. What a good dog. Good pup. When it was my meal times, oh what a joy it was to eat so proud and strong, standing at my dish. Now I crawl to my water and food and cannot understand why I cannot walk and stand on my own. Oh man, dude. I guarded my domain and took pride in my work. Now I cannot know how it hurts my pride. Come on, man, Joe, you're breaking my heart. I have completed my time and my job here on earth. Now it is time for me to go where there is no worries and pain. I have done my job well and it is time for my reward. Will you please give me a chance to let go of me? He's giving her a stack of treats, man. Cause she's the best. She's the fucking best. You know I love you. I know I always will live on in your heart and in your memory with our special bond. I'll never be far from you. Oh man, there's Joey with the oh fuck, dude, Joey, you're gonna make a, you're making us cry, man. We're crying for you. This is so sad, but it is my time to be able to be in your heart and be the healthy, happy dog I've been when I spent my time here on this earth with you. I'm gonna fucking explode, man. Rock on, Joey. Rock on, dude. Ah, uh, Bigglesworth is in here with me. With the love I know you have for me, my journey will be a blessing for me and you. Bigglesworth, go. Man, I'm, I'm holding him back, boys. I'm holding him back. It's fucking heartbreaking, man. I finally let you go for your new journey. 
I held you in my arm and head to your last breath. But I will have my aching heart for you. Love always. DJ Def Joey! There's, oh my god, a memory of Kibble 1996 to July 26, 2000. Can we please get a fucking rip Kibble in the comments right now? What we can get from all this is jo jo Joey seems like kind of a lonely guy. Sacrifice the child, the child, the child. He's a very positive guy. He seems a bit lonely. Let's go check out his other things. He has a blog that hasn't been updated since 2009. Uh, and he talks about the cyborg guys cyborging of everybody, which I'm sure was a pr is pretty big topic in like 2000 to 2010. Yeah, we're cyberpunk's becoming real. Cyberpunk Bob Mod. Where's DJ Def Joey today? He's retired and he actually has a photography website, though I don't know the last time that this was updated. These posts, I don't think have dates on them. Like these are, some of these are pretty fucking badass. Like that's nuts. Total page views, 4,366. I'm glad to be one of them, Joey. So you'll be happy to know that DJ Def Joey is still doing stuff to this day. He posted an epic wardrobe fails BuzzFeed meme last year in September. It also looks like you went to the Conjuring house last year. Interesting. It doesn't seem very active on his Twitter, but um, he's got a pretty badass profile picture. I'll give him that. But that is DJ Def Joey, everybody. I mean, Strange Man, it was a very viral video showing what might be the greatest unboxing video on YouTube. Morbidly curious guy, funky fellow and that's it for today that's our three channels our three strange youtube channels i hope that you guys enjoyed today uh, it's just a banger i actually really really enjoyed going over these channels today and uh, we got plenty more sorry that it's been like a month since the last one uh i went to australia and i've been here and i'm gonna be here for another month or so and then i go back and then I go to Japan. As always, make sure to go check out the other two episodes of Strange YouTube channels. It's hard to find a lot of these channels, and we really appreciate the support. If you watch the other two, you'll know what I mean. We have the first Little Fears, which is an interesting horror channel that uploaded creepy pastas with associated footage, home footage, and a pretty cool channel. We had Meat Sleep, but with Meat Sleep, we obviously just did a general run through it. We did not go through every single nook and cranny. Meat Sleep was the story of a serial killer that was actually an art project that was decided pretty much solely by dice. Made across four separate continents by 11 fucking people, which is insane, who all worked on individual pieces. They would make story dynamics and decide on them based on just rolling a dice. It's such a cool idea. And then finally, we had DJ Def Joey. Again, I say the greatest unboxing video of all time, but uh, we actually unboxed something kind of similar before on this channel. <laughs> I, I, I wish nothing but the best for DJ Def Joey. He seems like a very sweet man. Th again, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. These I really these are what I really enjoy making. And um, your continued support on them means the fucking world. You guys have no clue. I really thoroughly enjoy making stuff like this and actually researching topics. And it just means the world that you guys are still watching it and enjoying it and letting me do it. So until whatever weird thing we find next time, I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm over the stroke of my dick. I got motion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit.